Praise the Lord. Hallelujah today. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I praise you right now. Thank you for this message you've laid on my heart, Lord, to bring forth. And Father, I pray that it will reach in and divide asunder between the joint and the marrow of the soul and the spirit of your people, Lord, that it will reveal the thoughts, the intents, the motives of our heart, O oh God. Father, that it will be only love, that love would be our only motive, Lord. Loving you with the love you loved us with, Lord, and that you love us with. And that we be obedient children, Lord, and walk with you because it's a joy, not a chore. Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, you break and crush every demonic force, Lord. Every demonic force that would try to hinder this word from taking root in good soil, good ground today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Teach us how to break up our fallow ground, Lord. Any fallow ground in us, Lord, break it up. Help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah, saints. Praise God. Okay, now, Matthew chapter 24. We're going to start at verse 42. Okay. Now, the Bible, the Holy Scripture, when Matthew penned the gospel that he wrote, that the Holy Spirit had him write, he didn't put verse numbers and chapter numbers when he wrote it. Okay. We did that later on. Man did in order for quick reference. Okay. Of the verses. So I always like to go back and look because I'm familiar with the scripture. I go back and look at Matthew 24 because it's, you know, it runs right up against 25. Praise the Lord. And starting at verse 42 of Matthew 24. And Jesus is speaking, hallelujah. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. You don't know what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch, the thief would come. He would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. So we're to be ready like this goodman, okay? The goodman who he wants us to be ready, watch. Okay? If the goodman had, of the house had watched, he, he the devil wouldn't have been able to come in. See, we have to watch. We have to be on watch, saints. We have to be on guard. Hallelujah. Standing with all the armor of God on. Hallelujah. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. In such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Now a lot of times, most of the time when we read verse 44, we think that's the second coming. Well, it, it, it's speaking of the second coming. Jesus surely is speaking of that. Of his coming back to this earth again. But it's also coming to you today. The Lord wants to come to us today. He wants to come to us and reveal things to us today. But we got to be watchful. We got to we got to take our thoughts captive. We have to see what we're what we're paying attention to with our minds and take every thought captive. Cast down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God that Jesus Christ has done the work and given us the victory. Hallelujah. And gives us the grace and the faith and the hope and the love that we need to walk victorious lives. Hallelujah. In His presence. Hallelujah. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom His Lord hath made ruler over His household to give them meat in due season? Who is that? Jesus said. Blessed is that servant. Whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. See, we want to be busy doing exactly what the Father has prepared for us to do. Now, if you're a baby Christian and you've been just a Christian for two, three, or four years, or five years, and you're just young in the faith, okay, maybe you don't know fully exactly what God's work in your life is, but I'm going to tell you what it is, okay? The will of the Lord for all of us, first of all, is to give thanks. Hallelujah. Give thanks in all things. See? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 
Hallelujah. So start right there. See? Start right there. Give God thanks. We all have to do that. We have to give Him thanks no matter what's going on in our life or, or what's happening. We have to give God thanks. Hallelujah. That's His will, and we have to be obedient to His will. So there's just one little stepping stone right there. When we're successful in that, and as we're walking by the Spirit, the Lord reveals more of what He wants us to do. See? His plan unfolds. Hallelujah. And we don't want to get stagnant. Okay? We want to stay out of the stagnant water. Don't get stagnant. Hallelujah. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. See, God's going to make us ruler over all his goods. Now, I want you to look at you. When, when I'm reading this to you, we have a tendency just to look in the natural realm, okay, at all these things in the natural. But Jesus said in John 6, 63, that the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So let's we got to get into the deep part, into the deep spiritual significance of what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying to us, okay? Because that's what's going to help us. That's what's going to keep us. See, we're not of this world, okay, as Christians. We are aliens here. We are the aliens. We are the, the ones passing through, see? We're pilgrims here. So, so our kingdom, the kingdom we belong to, is heaven. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the kingdom. Hallelujah. See? And he rules his kingdom. And so we rule with him. We are seated with him in heavenly places. It says in Ephesians chapter 1 and 2. We are seated with him in heavenly places. We are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. But, and if. Now this is, Jesus would not say this in verse 48 if it wasn't possible. But it is possible. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. See, See, there are servants of the Lord that are evil. And those are the ones who are focused on their self. They're always trying to protect their self and protect their stuff and keep their own stuff or whatever protected. Like they have to put a guard on it, see? Instead of surrendering it all to God like He wants us to do our whole life, see? Our whole life. Everything that we own in this world, everything that's in our possession is given to us of the Lord. But we have to give it back to God. We have to throw it back on Him so that it doesn't hold us, see? We don't have to guard it. God guards it, see? But we be on guard, like He said earlier. Be on guard. Against what? Against the devil. See, the devil's going to attack our mind. The devil's going to tell us, hey, you got to do this. you got to make sure this is done. you got to make sure... No. No, we don't have to do anything except focus on the Lord. And the Lord, the Holy Spirit, will show us what to do, see? Because if we start using our mind, our carnal mind, okay, our, in other words, the soul man, the self-life, to try to do things for God, we're acting in a religious way. We're acting in a way that's not pleasing to the Father. See, it's not hard to follow the Lord, okay? It entails suffering. It entails sorrow to walk with Jesus. But it's not hard. It's supposed to be a joy, like it was for Him, see? It was a joy for the Lord to do the work of the Father. And he knew that joy. He walked in it. The joy of the Lord was his strength. Hallelujah. See, the Father was well pleased with him. He told John the Baptist, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. He told Peter, James, and John the same thing up on the mountain. See, he's pleased with his Son. And so when we're in the Son, the Father's pleased with us. When, when the Father sees us in the Son doing as the Son did, Hallelujah. As the Father sent me, Jesus said, so send I you. And so we walk with the same attitude, the same mind. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, thought it not robbery of equal with God, but emptied himself and made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, a slave, and was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, see? But many of us, we go so far with God, and then we stop. We say, I can't go any further. No, that's going to entail some sacrifice. That's going to entail me having to give something or give up something or, or do something for the Lord that I really don't want to do because that goes against my grain. That goes against my upbringing. Okay? That goes against what the world has taught me to do. See? God, everything God does is opposite of what the world does. Okay? 180 degrees. Jesus doesn't operate by the world order. 
See, all the education system, all the stuff that people have learned growing up, that's the world order, okay? That's the world order. That's how man's been doing things for centuries, thousands and thousands of years. Man's been trying to preserve his life. And find the elixir, oh, the, the elixir of life, you know, the fountain of youth. They, they want to stay young. They want to stay alive. But they can't. Death comes knocking on the door. Hallelujah. And you got to keep your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the life is. But man doesn't want to humble himself because man's a prideful being. Therefore, man, when Jesus comes and says, okay, now, I want you to do this. I want you to surrender that. I want you to give this. And, and we go, no, because it goes against our upbringing that we had in the world. Well, the Lord says, you have your mind renewed by the washing of water, by the Word, by the Holy Scripture, see, that the Holy Spirit wrote. And as you're reading the Word and the Holy Spirit speaks to you something, be obedient to what He's saying to you. Hallelujah. And then you grow it by leaps and bounds, see. Then you're filled with the Spirit of God more and more. It's just like bursting out of you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to you, Holy Name. But and if that evil servant, see, that's an evil servant, always wanting to, to protect things, thinking they're doing it for God, see? See, religious people, that's what they do. And religious people, they, they say, God wants me to do this, okay? And this, happen, this is what's happening in the church. You have these churches founded by men, okay? And they set up and they start having, like, let's just talk about a church with 300 people. And all of a sudden, one of the elders, he's like a head elder or something, and, and we've seen this before, and they split off, and they start another fellowship. I mean, we went to one in Oklahoma City, and they had their meetings at a, at a school. They used the school auditorium for their meetings, and, and they had it set up just like a church and everything, but it was just, the spirit there was just a spirit of, of strife and division. It wasn't a, a spirit of unity and, and continuity, see? The church is supposed to be one. There's not supposed to be denominations. And if people can't meet at the cross, what happens is when they when people split off from denominations and they, they start another thing, what happens is inside that denomination they start, inside that little service they start, the same thing happens again. And then you have another split and another split. It's because the devil has come in, because the devil's using people and making them think they got to do this for God and do that for God and do this for God. And God says, you don't got to do nothing for him except surrender. And let him have your vessel so he can do through you. See? It's what he says to us. Me and my wife. There have been times when we, oh, I'm going to do this for God. I'm going to do that for God. And it doesn't work. You can't do that. You, the best thing to do is surrender. See? Praise God. I mean, we didn't know eight years ago when God sent us out from Oklahoma. He sent us out in our motorhome. We come to Arkansas. We didn't know. Then, eight years ago, that we'd be on the computer ministry, now over four years, we didn't know that. We had no idea because we were against the computer. In our thinking, in our mind, we, we didn't want no computer. No, that's the devil. That's what we said. Okay? But for us at that time, it was. I mean, we didn't. it wasn't for us. Because when we came to Arkansas, and for three years, I mean, we were among the people. We were ministering among them. We still do. We still go to people's houses. We still go into their homes and minister to them. But the bulk of our ministry is on the Internet. And that's where God has it. So if I try to go do something else, I'm out of His will. If, if, the, if the devil tries to plant a thought in my mind and tells me go do this and go do that, then I'm out of His will. See? And I'll suffer for it. My wife will suffer for it. So God wants us to stay, pay attention and stay focused on Him and do what He's saying to do. Because if we do what He says to do, we're going to be blessed. Religion will kill. Religion will bind us up. Will, it will keep us bound. And God says, no. No, don't do that. Hallelujah. See? But the evil servant, he says, in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. Many people today, do you think God's delaying his coming? No. Jesus can walk through your front door right now. His holy presence can walk right in. In all of his majesty. And we invite him to come into our house. We say, Lord, come, Lord, come. You know, the Lord, he wants us to, he wants us just to be walking with him and loving him and praising him and being obedient to him and not worried about all the circumstances of this life. We got to remember we're aliens. We're pilgrims passing through. Hallelujah. Now I got to get on with this. Praise God. I got a lot to read to you. 
Hallelujah. If that evil servant says in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, it shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. Okay? See, that he, to smite his fellow servants. In other words, lord it over. Lord it over, people. And this is one thing we have found that people do with us. They try to lord over us. It has happened so many times. And they use, mainly they use things of the world, of whether it's, it's uh, goods or services or money or whatever they use. They, they try to use things, okay, or the way that the thing, the cars they drive, or you see what I'm saying, or things like that. They look at us driving an old 86 Toyota pickup and they're driving a new car or a newer model. And so they think they can lord over us. See, this is doing, that's, well, this is what this is, see. In the spirit realm, in the spirit realm. And so, and, and we've seen people talking about us before and walk in the room and, and then they just all be quiet. You know they're talking about you. They're talking bad about you. But what do you do? You just praise the Lord. You worship God. Jesus said it would be this way. Hallelujah. You go forward in Christ. Hallelujah. And then to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken. That's not just alcohol. That's drunken in the ways of the world. See, the church today is drunken in the ways of the world. Movies, sports, television, literature, all, all, all sorts of stuff. You know, fashion, makeup, all the stuff the world does is, is in the church. And they're drunken with it, see? Drunken with it. And the Lord says, no, it shouldn't be this way, see? The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him. And in an hour that he is not aware of. And shall cut him asunder and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. Those who are fakers. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's sad, isn't it? Then... Now, there's no chapters when Matthew wrote this. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, okay, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. Were wise. Now, that word wise there, that word wise is uh, thoughtful. They were thoughtful. They were thinking of others. They were thinking about the Lord. Thinking about the will of God. They were seeking the Lord. They were thoughtful. They were sagacious or discreet. They had a cautious character. They were, they were aware of the snares of the devil. You know, you can minister to somebody. You can tell them, listen, this could be a snare for you. Whatever it might be. And, the, and they'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... They forget. How? Because something else came in. Something else happened in their life. And the devil comes in. Boom. And he, and he sneaks. See, the devil is subtle. The devil is cunning. And the thing the devil uses among Christians more than anything is religion. And he's cunning. And he'll operate on your soul. He'll operate on your thinking. And he'll mimic God. He'll mimic the voice of God. And you got to be very, very careful. You have to be cautious. You have to be a wise virgin, see? See, we are like virgins. Paul said that I might present you as a chaste virgin unto Christ. See, this he's talking about the church here. Okay? He's talking about the church here. And five of them were wise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Intelligence. Mental acquirement. Hallelujah. And five were foolish. Now that word foolish is dull or stupid. Not knowing the ways of the devil. Think you know it all. See, that's dull or stupid. As if shut up. That is heedless. Heedless. Don't listen to what people are saying. Don't take it to prayer when the word of the Lord comes forth out of someone's mouth. You just, you just buck up in pride. See, arrogance. Okay, uh, morally it means blockhead. Okay, the blockhead, the foolish. See, absurd. They're absurd. They that were foolish 
the blockheads took their lamps and took no oil with them. See, it doesn't matter how much things people possess today. Whether lands, houses, food, clothing, shelter, money. It doesn't matter how much they possess. What matters is how much of Christ is cultivated in us. How much of Christ is birthed in us. I mean, how much or have we surrendered and let the Holy Spirit take over our vessel and form Christ inside? The peace that surpasses all understanding. Are we becoming more like Jerusalem, the city of peace, every day? Not the city in Israel on the geographical plane. I'm talking about the new Jerusalem, hallelujah, in heaven. Are we becoming more like that city of peace with the 12 foundations? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the high wall, hallelujah, made of diamond. Pure, you see right through it, it's beautiful. See, are, are we in that fortified city today? Oh, hallelujah, saints. Are we standing on the rock, Christ Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. See, they had everything they needed in this life. They didn't think they needed any Holy Spirit refining. They didn't think they needed any uh, plowing. They didn't think they needed anything from God. They had it all. See, they got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. And they got everything they need in this life, and they don't need anything else. But you go read Revelation chapter 3 about the church to Laodicea. Okay, you find out if you're in that church, see, if you're acting like those people acted. Oh, hallelujah. But the wise took oil in their vessels. The cautious ones, they knew. They got to cultivate. They got to pray. They got to seek the Lord. They got to get down and pray with pray to God, Hallelujah. See and commune and commune with the brethren, commune with the brethren. See, when you when you get close friendships going on, and the devil wants to come in and separate that friendship, the devil wants to do anything he can to separate it, because he knows as we come together and we focus on the Lord together, we grow by leaps and bounds, Hallelujah. We submit to the Lord and submit one to another in the fear of God. And that's what the Lord wants. That's his desire. See, we are one body of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. But the wise, hallelujah, took oil in their vessels with their lamps. See, oh, hallelujah. Yes. And, and taking oil in your vessel, it could be like, it, it, it's like your experience. You've been through the battle. You've been through many battles and many confrontations with the enemy and you come out on top because the Lord is in you and you know, see, you have a resource to draw upon. Hallelujah. See, your experience. Many of you, you don't have any experience. Why? Because you really haven't been walking with the Lord fully like He wants you to. He wants you to surrender all, everything, everything. See? Surrender all. Because it's a vast ocean of beauty that the Lord is in love and mercy and grace and justice. He is he, deeper than the ocean is deep. He fills the universe in all of its parts and he wants us to be knowing him more. Hallelujah. Praise God. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they sl all slumbered and slept. They all slumbered and slept. You know, they all slumbered and slept. This is like the church age. Okay, you look at it like the church age. The church age from the time of the resurrection and Pentecost up to today, you know, the churches just kind of went to sleep. They just let the devil come in and corrupt the whole church. Because men wouldn't stand up for the truth. And those who do stand up for the truth are ridiculed and lied about and slandered about. We don't want people to follow us. We want people to follow Jesus Christ, see? Because when you get in a relationship with Him and you know Him, and you know Him deep in your heart, you're walking with Him, you're loving Him and praising Him, it doesn't matter if you ever see John Farrell's face or if you ever talk to Him again. Because you know Jesus. Hallelujah. And if me and Sharon got killed today driving down the highway, it wouldn't matter to you. 
See? You'd be sad because you wouldn't hear from us anymore, but we'd be in glory. And you'd be strong in the Lord and the power of His might and go forward in Christ. Hallelujah. See? That's what matters. Hallelujah. And at midnight, oh, at midnight, in the darkest hour, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. See, at midnight, in your darkest part of your, your being, in the darkest part, when you're going through the battle, see, there's a cry made, the bridegroom comes. What are you going to do? Run and hide? See, you should be ready. You should be ready. We should all be ready. Well, God, make us ready. Make us ready. Go ye out to meet him. Go ye out to meet him. See? You don't go out clothed with the ways of the world. You don't go out clothed with the way the world does things. You go out clothed in that robe of righteousness, which is Christ. Imitating Christ. Walking with Christ. Sur surrendering to the Father. Submitting to God. See? Hallelujah. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. In other words, give us of your robe. Cover us with your righteousness. And, and But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. See, go, go buy for yourself now, see? See, because many people in the church today, they're doing for their self, okay? They're trying to draw people to them, to make them look at them and go, oh, you're such a good person. Oh, you're such a good brother. You're such a good sister. Oh, you're an elder. Oh, you're this. Oh, you're that. Flattery. Vainglory. All this stuff that happens in the church. We have to be cautious of that. We have to guard against that. I guarantee you when we sense a, a spirit of flattery on somebody trying to flatter us, we go cut, we, we nix it right there. The Holy Spirit quickens to us something to write back to them. Bam! And cut that flattery spirit right off. Because we're nothing. Nothing at all. The Lord is all. The Lord is everything. Hallelujah. See? And so, and so now they're now here they come. Here they come, see? Here they come, those that have not surrendered, those that have not surrendered their life to God. Everything about them, I mean, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. you got to remember that rich young ruler. Jesus said, he was justifying himself. He said, look what I'm doing for you, Lord. I'm keeping the law. Look, Lord, I'm sitting in the church. Look, Lord, I'm an elder. Look, Lord, I clean the church every Sunday. Look, Lord, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm justifying myself, see? And the Lord says, but you lack one thing. That's why he told him, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and come follow me, see? Because he was trying to justify himself. But we don't have to justify ourselves, saints. Jesus is our justification, see? We can surrender everything that God has given us to God every single day and be stewards over it where God says, give that. Go over here. Do this. Do that. And we're obedient. Because see, if God told a person to give something and they give it, he'll give back to them a hundredfold. God give back. Jesus said, you can't outgive him. He said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. And running over shall men pour into your bosom. And some people delay in giving. Oh no, don't do that. Don't delay. When God says give, give when God says. Hallelujah. See? When God says give that, give it. If you if you see a need and you know you, you're going to go meet that need because God said to give, be a giver like Him, and you go to be a, meet meet that need, and on the way the Lord says, wait till tomorrow or wait till next week. Be obedient. Do what God says. See, it works both ways. We have to do what the Holy Spirit tells us to do. But these people, these virgins, this church. See, now, they, they didn't want to surrender to God. They didn't want to walk fully. They didn't want to go into the Holy of Holies. No, they want, they want to dabble in the outer court, see. They want to dance and sing and have fun in the outer court and not go into the Holy of Holies where the, where the real commitment is made, see, where the real surrender takes place. And so when the bridegroom comes, here they, 
here, here comes the bridegroom. Now they're saying, hey, give us, give us some of your spirit. Give us some of your oil. Hey, let us wear your robe. Can you cut off part of your robe and make me a robe so I can put it on? Because the bridegroom's coming. See? But the wise answer saying, not so. Not so. Lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. See? In other words, go to the merchant. That's what it says. Go to the merchant. Go, go to the world. See? Isaiah 48 says, or 47, it says, you know, where we'll go to now. Let me, let me get that. I'll read that. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's in Isaiah. I think it's in 47. It might be 40, 47. I'm pretty sure. Isaiah 47. It says, this is talking about Babylon here, okay? And, and verse 1, just the first part of it, come down and sit in the dust, O virgin daughter of Babylon, okay? And so God's talking to this spirit, this, this, this world, this age, okay? And he says, in, starting in verse 11 here, I'm just going to jump over. Therefore shall evil come upon thee. See, because, because they weren't doing what God said. Evil shall come upon thee. Thou shalt not know from whence it riseth. And mischief shall fall upon thee. Thou shalt not be able to put it off. No. And desolation shall come upon thee suddenly. Which thou shalt not know. Now how many people in the Northeast? How many people over in the Washington, D.C. area? And in Virginia? And in West Virginia? And in Maryland? And New Jersey? Huh? Sudden destruction. Bam. Boom. See? Just, I mean, right out of nowhere. Most people were in their bed sleeping. Bam! That, that's, that's a perfect picture of what this is saying right here. Stand now with thine enchantments, God says, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit. If so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art weary. Thou art weary in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, oh, praise God, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. See, these, these foolish virgins, they're saying, help us, help us. Oh, and God's saying, no, you go, you go back to the world. You've been dabbling in the world, living in the world. I've been calling you and calling you and calling you to stop riding the fence and get on with me. And you didn't want to do it. And now, bam -o. Now, now God says, you just go on, see? Many of you, you turn the shoulder to God, see? They turn away the shoulder, Zechariah chapter 7. You turn the shoulder to God. See, when you turn the shoulder to one of God's people, you turn the shoulder to God. You're telling God, I'm not going to help you, God. Jesus said, if they receive you, they receive me. Oh, praise God. Now listen. Let me finish reading this. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save thee from these things which shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble. The fire shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. No. People were running from the flame in Colorado. See? They can't deliver themselves from the power of the flame. See? They, they got their life out. God is so merciful. Do you know how merciful our Heavenly Father is? That all those people, I mean, out of all those houses burned down, two people lost their lives, unfortunately. And I, they are probably saints. Probably God probably took them home. Praise God. But they were probably scared, but the Holy Spirit was with them. If they were born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, they had nothing to fear, and they probably just, it probably happened fast for them. Unfortunately, it's sad. It really is. It's a tragedy. But I'm telling you right now, God sent it as a wake-up call to Colorado. A wake-up call to Colorado Springs. Get right with God. Get right with God. His mercy was extended. The fire does a, a full work. But that's, that's just one type of fire. God has thousands of different types of fire. Probably millions we don't even know about. Look at the fire of the Holy Ghost. Oh man, that's a fire in it. We don't even, I mean, we begin to just barely even know that. Hallelujah.
I want to know the Holy Ghost more. Hallelujah. Thus shall they be. <clears throat> Verse 15, Isaiah 47. Thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. None shall save Babylon. And if you're walking with Jesus and you're walking with Babylon, I'm telling you right now, you can't do it. You can't do it. Jesus is jealous. God is a jealous God. Okay? And he's warning you today with this parable of the ten virgins. Walk with him. Get with him. Because if you're not, and things happen in this earth, and they're going to happen more and more. You could very well be one of these foolish virgins. And I don't want to see that in your life. And my wife doesn't want to see that. We don't want to see that happen to nobody. We love you, and God loves you. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went out with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. The door was shut. And the word shut there is to, to close. Verb. It's a verb. To close. Shut up. You know, I I really believe the Lord is shutting the door. I mean, it, it's like the door is pushing shut. You know, God's door is probably huge. It's big. You know, I mean, it's when you think of a door, you think of the door you walk into your house, you know. But, but I'm telling you, uh, when it says the shield of faith, that, that word faith there, the shield, the word shield is like a door. Jesus said, I am the door. Okay, John chapter 10. So, shutting the door. And some people say that's where grace is cut off. I don't know about all that. I'm not going to say that because God's grace is everlasting, man. When you fear God, He's going to bring you. Many of you, I know you're saved and you're filled with the Spirit from a young age, maybe later in life, you know, and, and, and there's things this world just chokes off. Jesus said the cares of this life will choke off the life of Christ. It's like thorns growing up. But God wants to, He just wants to take that axe to the root of that thorn tree and just cut it off with you. See? Where that stuff doesn't tangle you up anymore. But that you have everything. You, it's not like He wants you to just... Uh, it's like this. He wants you to surrender everything to His disposal. Hallelujah. See? Where you're not worried about nothing. Where if, if if you went to work one day and while you were gone at work, your whole house burnt to the ground and all of your important papers and all of your stuff and all everything you owned is gone. Just a pile of ashes when you get home. It wouldn't matter to you. Because you got Jesus. And you could see the ashes and you could look at them and then you could look up to heaven and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. See, that's how God wants us to be. That's how he wants us to be, saints. Where we can say thank you, God, for everything. For everything. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. So the door is being shut. I believe it's being shut. I know my wife feels the same way. Afterward came also the other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch ye therefore. Watch therefore, for ye know not. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You don't know the day and you don't know the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Now, Matthew twenty-five fourteen, <clears throat> Continuing on. We're talking about the kingdom of heaven. We're talking about the return of the Lord. We're talking about what kind of servants we're supposed to be. See, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his severe ability. And straightway took his journey. Now, what does this mean? What it means is the Lord has placed a deposit in us. He has placed a deposit in us, in our heart. Okay? In our heart. 
of his spirit. And to some he gives more, and of them more is required. And of some he gives less, and less is required, but something is required. And unto one he gave five talents. Now, a talent is money. It's talking about money. So when you take this as a literal parable, okay, Jesus is speaking about money. He's talking about money. I made a video one time. Jesus is talking about money. Boy, we lost a lot of friends that day. But I had to make the video, praise God, because it's the truth. And he does talk about money. Okay? And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had the five talents went and traded with the same. And made them other five talents. Hallelujah. See? Oh, he was a very shrewd person. He was a very clever person. He knew how to, to take that five and turn it into ten. See? He had the ability. Well, how was he able to do that? By listening to the Holy Ghost. See? By doing as the Master said. See, he's a servant of the Master. He's not just a servant. He doesn't just become a servant one day. And then not know the master. The master is not going to give it to a servant that he doesn't know. See? And why did he give him five? Because he knew he could handle five. He gave it to him. And so then he went and traded and he made five more. Hallelujah. So what would that mean? God put a deposit in you, brother, sister, child. God put a deposit in you of his Holy Ghost. And that deposit in you, you have to cultivate that. You have to surrender. You have to get in the Word and pray and seek the Lord so that you will be expounding more and more and the Lord will, will show things to you and give you revelation. Hallelujah. See? So that you can instruct others. Hallelujah. In the way. And likewise, he that had received two, he gained also gained other two. Oh, hallelujah. See? Jesus knew that he could only handle two, so he gave him two. Hallelujah. Praise God. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. He hid the money. Oh, yeah. And some people do that today. See? They hide the money. They, they hide the resource. See? Many of you, you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you know the Lord, and you have experience in your life, and you're hiding that. You're keeping that from the body of Christ. You're not sharing like God wants you to share. Hallelujah. And God's calling on you to share because it strengthens the brethren. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Oh, hallelujah. He's going. He's coming now. He's, he's got his book out. He's reckoning with them. Hallelujah. He's, that reckon means compute. You know, to, to tally up. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them Five talents more. Hallelujah. He was excited. Here comes the Lord. All right. I'm ready to deliver. Hallelujah. See? And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Oh, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. See, this is a spiritual and it's also in the physical. Because many of you, God has given resources in the natural. Okay? Money. Resources. To use for his kingdom. Not for self. Oh, he allows you to have many nice things for yourself. He allows you to have the ability, if you see something you want, to go get it. But is it what he wants for you? See? I know one thing I like to have is ice cream. I like that. But sometimes it's not his will for me to have it. See? But when it is, I enjoy it. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. That's just a little bitty little little thing. It's nothing. Okay? But look at that. He that received five talents came and brought other five. He brought other five. Saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. In other words, he was doing something with what God gave him. Hallelujah. For the kingdom. Hallelujah. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. In Luke, it's, it's recorded in chapter 19, it's, it's, he got ten cities to rule over. The other one got five cities to rule over. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Now, in the spirit seat, I have to be obedient to God and cultivate what God's put in me. Experience the experience of my walk, Sharon's walk together, our walk together. We have to be obedient and share that, see, and give that out. See, and that's expounding. That's that's taking the five and making it ten, or taking the ten and making it twenty. Hallelujah! Because as I start speaking, see, if I don't sit down and push record and start making a message, then then the Holy Spirit can't speak through me to you to help you and you might get one little thing out of this mess one little thing and if you get one little thing that will help you to let go over here or let go over there or repent here or repent there praise God see the work is fulfilled Hallelujah. Hallelujah. but the Lord showed us you receive him when you receive Christ you receive the truth you are blessed and Jesus said, he who receives you, receives me. See? Hallelujah. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee. I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. In other words, Okay, here, I'm, I'm giving you back your tile, your talent. Here, Lord, I'm giving you back the, the dollar you gave me. See? I'm giving it back to you. Aren't I a good servant? You gave me a dollar, and I'm giving it back to you. Wow. That's how some people are today in the church. That's how they are. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, here, here, here's your talent back. He was afraid. See, He was afraid he wasn't going to have a talent. <laughs> he was afraid he wasn't going to have any money left. <laughs> you know, if he went and tried to trade with one, oh man, huh, if he lost that one, that's it. See? He was afraid. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Slothful, lazy. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Oh, hallelujah. You know, put the money in the bank. And then when I come to call. And the Lord, you know, I, I asked the Lord about this verse. Because it's like many people... Many people that are in my age group, okay, 50 or older, up to 65, you know, they, 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 they've accumulated a lot of this world's goods, whether it's money, land, houses, whatever. You know, middle class and upper middle class people, okay, and even up into the, to the high realms of the rich, okay, and I'm not talking about Bill Gates rich, okay, I'm talking about over a million dollars in the bank, okay, and they've invested and they've done good and they've done wisely, see, but what are they doing with their investments? What are they doing? God is asking you, what are you doing? See? Because it's just there. It's just sitting there. See? And that's that's what this this guy did, see? He hid it in the earth and it was just but he Jesus said, You should have put it in and, and, and then I can get it back, see, from the investment, from the usury, see? And so that's what Christ is saying to many of you. See? Take some of that investment that you gain and give it back to Jesus. See? But many of you, you, you go, oh, no, no, I can't do that. No, I need that. Okay. Lord says, all right. Well, no, slothful, wicked servant. That's what he says. Okay. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto them, unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. Oh, hallelujah. And he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Now we must remember, this is not just speaking about physical money. This is speaking about the deposit of the Holy Ghost in our hearts. Okay, This is what this is talking about mainly. Okay, It's a parable. Okay, Using money as an object to describe the parable. Do you understand? 
This is mainly talking about the spirit, okay? But it can also be applied to the natural realm. Do you understand? Okay? I want to make that clear. Praise God. For unto everyone that has shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay? Now, there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth in the outer darkness. Because the people in the outer darkness are going to know they're in the darkness. And they're going to have a conscious understanding that they are in the outer darkness. Okay? They are estranged from Christ forever. And they will be weeping and gnashing their teeth. And we don't want to be any of those people, do we, saints? No. We want to be obedient servants to Christ. We want to walk in obedience, see? It's not just about getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's about doing what He says once you are saved. And being obedient to the work He's called you to do. Hallelujah. We all have to be obedient to that work that He's prepared for us from the foundation of the world in His Son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, verse 31. Now, what people have done in the church, and this is what they've done. They've, they've taken Matthew 24 and they divided it up into like three or four different sections. Then they go to Matthew 25 and they divide it up between three sections, okay, or even four. But the Lord says, no. The Lord says, no. See? Now, here's the kingdom. Hallelujah. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, See, he's talking about he went away, and then he's coming back. See, so here it is. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all, all the holy angels with him. That's a lot. We don't know how many that is, but it's a whole lot. Hallelujah. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, the authority of his glory. Hallelujah. And before him shall be gathered all nations. The word nations there is ethnos. It's ethnic groups. Okay. Every nation. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Now in John chapter uh, 5 verse 28, it says when the Son of Man comes, it says all who are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. Those that have done good unto the resurrection of life and those that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation that's what it says in the word of the Lord hallelujah so people that teach and that preach there ain't no eternal hell are liars from the pit of hell and they are headed to the pit of hell and they've been deluded why because of love of money because of love of the world because of love of self because of love of all these different things that are so earthbound and filled with death. That's why. Okay? And because they don't want to be obedient to God, God pulls back and the devil comes in, mimics the Lord, and gives them a false teaching, and they run with it. And that's a fact, Jack. And you'll find that the Scientology Church, they believe in reincarnation, all this universalism junk, the Universalist Church, the Unity Churches, all these churches that believe everyone's going to be saved. Most of these places are very, very, very affluent places. See? Affluency in the world's way. See? The true believers, hallelujah, you go to China. You go to China, look at the true believers. See? They're not affluent in this world's goods, but they are affluent. They have the deposit of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. See? And they're filled to overflowing with joy and sorrow. They fellowship in the suffering. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Saints. Praise God. But Jesus is coming. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. But the goats on the left. This is what he's going to do. Then shall the king say to them on his right hand, Come! Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to hear that. I know many of you are going to hear that. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit 
the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, God's been working on that kingdom a long time. Oh, and I want to see it. You know what the, the Holy Spirit whispers to me? You can see it right now, John, in your heart. You can see it right now in your heart. He says, let me wipe away every tear right now, John. I say, yes, Lord. Wipe away every tear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we don't have to wait. We have the kingdom within. Hallelujah. Many of these false teachers, they say, if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, I just have to chuckle when I hear them say this. Because, see, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within us. It doesn't come with observation. Lo, I see it here. Lo, it's over there. It's within us. Hallelujah. See? And when you're walking close to the Lord, it doesn't matter. The devil tries to make us think things matter in our circumstances, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that we love Him and are obedient to Him and walk with Him. That's what matters. Hallelujah. He said, For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. Oh, hallelujah. We have a dear brother on the other side of the county. And uh, we were hungering for some meat and prayed to the Lord, prayed to God for some meat. And we saw this man in town. And he said, y'all come to my house and I'll give you some meat. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. He gave me a bag of about 60 pounds of steaks and ribeyes and ground beef and that he raised himself. And the Lord says, I give meat to those that fear me. Hallelujah. And this man gave us meat. See. And he ain't going to lose his reward, I promise you. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. Hallelujah. I was a stranger and you took me in. Many people, they've taken us in. We were strangers to them. They took us in. Hallelujah. Naked and you clothed me. Oh, hallelujah. There have been people, and I know many of you can do this. You can give clothes to the free place. You have many clothes. You can take clothes down to the free place and, and donate some clothes. And that's where we get a lot of our clothes. Uh, most of our shirts come from the free place because that's where we go get shirts. And I found, like, I, one time I found, like, 10 Stafford really nice shirts. Nice shirts. Brand new. Hanging on the rack. Praise God. Because somebody was kind enough to donate them and give them. And I got them. Praise the Lord. And the Lord provided. But Jesus, I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. See, many of you, you're in prison today. You're in prison to sin. You're in prison to the world. You're in prison. And I'm trying to come visit you today. Me and my wife are trying to come in the spirit and visit you. Pray for you. We pray for you every day. We we do. We lift you up to the Lord. We know what's going on in your life because we can feel it in the spirit. We can feel it in the spirit. We have discernment. See, we're one with the body of Christ in Christ. So we know what's going on. So we're praying for you, lifting you up, praying over you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger? And fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink. Because, see, they're humble. They're saying, when, when did we see this, Lord? See, When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer, and say unto thee, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Oh, how. Isn't that beautiful? That's just beautiful. I mean, what a reward we have waiting for us. But we have to be diligent about doing these things that Jesus is speaking of here. We really do. We have to be diligent about it, saints. We have to be on guard about it. I mean, me and Shara can do more. We can do more. We don't have... a of the resources of this world very much. But we can do more in the spirit. And we can do more physically too. See, Because it's not just about money. It's not. It's about doing. 
with your hands. See, it's about putting the arm around somebody and listening to somebody and about loving them, caring for them. See, hallelujah. And there have been times we've been negligent in that. And Lord forgive us. And He does. See, praise God. Hallelujah. Then shall He say, verse 41, also unto them on the left hand. Now see, the sheep are on the right hand and the goats are on the left. He separates. When He comes in His glory, every when Jesus comes back, everyone that's ever been born will be instantly resurrected. All who are still alive will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And those that belong to the Lord will meet Him in the air. And we're all going to be standing there. And the Lord is going to judge. He's going to separate the sheep on one side and the goats on the other. This is a parable, but it's also a literal thing that's going to take place. We don't know how it's going to look, though. We can't paint a picture of it like a Hollywood movie, okay? But the principles here, the principles here. Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, 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 into everlasting fire. And the word everlasting there is perpetual, perpetual. Also used of past time or past and future as well. Eternal, forever, everlasting, world began. Okay, it's everlasting fire. Then shall they say also unto them, Then shall he say, Jesus speaking, also unto them on his left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Everlasting fire prepared for the devil. See, it was prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. You know, we knew a lady one time that was, she had a lot of meat, but she gave no meat. And it was so sad. And then one time we saw her in the store. We said hi to her. We just wanted to let her know we, we still thought about her and loved her. We just, I just said hi to her. That's all I did. And when she looked at me, her face just, her face just turned red as a, just like a, a red sheet of paper, just as red, just instantly, and her countenance just changed to such a, just like a wickedness. And man, me, me and Sharon were just so, our hearts were just like so broken. It was just like, man, God, please help me. Please help the Lord. And we were really praying for her. And it really breaks our heart to see that. But people really do that. They really do. There are wicked people in the world. And they will be there when Jesus comes back. And he's going to hear them say, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was not hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. You know, I'm going to stop there. Verse 42, for I was in hunger and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. You know, over in Yugoslavia and in Romania and places, anytime you go into someone's house, the first thing they, they say, they say, sit down, make yourself at home. Would you like something to eat? And then they go in the kitchen and make you a big meal. And they, would you like something to drink? That's just instantly. As soon as you go in their house, this is what they do. That's the culture. That's how they are. See? But in America, it's like they don't do that. We used to go in these one people's house. They never, we could sit there for three hours. They never offer us anything to drink. Never. And if we wanted something, we had to ask for it, but we just, we never did. At that particular place. But I have asked for water. It's like you be at someone's house and you say, can I get a glass of water? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They'll say, yeah. It should be the first thing we think about. 
We went into this one lady's house the first time we ever went in her house. You know what she did? She said, are you guys hungry? You want something to eat? <laughs> we said, praise God, sure, we'll have something to eat. And that's the way it's supposed to be in the church. Hallelujah. Those who profess Jesus. Hallelujah. I was a stranger and you took me not in. Naked and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison and you visited me not. Then shall they say, then shall they say, Then shall they also answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, my brethren, to one of the least of these ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting fire excuse me and these shall go away into everlasting punishment but the righteous into life eternal now if life eternal life there is uh, zoe okay life literally or figuratively life lifetime okay life Eternal, 166, eternal, aenos, perpetual, what I read earlier. Past time or past and future as well, eternal, forever, everlasting, world began. Life eternal, we say, that's forever. That's for billions and billions and billions and trillions and gazillions and quadrillions and, and quintillions and numbers man can't even think about years, okay? That, that, that's forever, life eternal. But they say, everlasting punishment Okay, and punishment is there is penal infliction, punishment, torment, torment, torment. Now, if someone's tormenting me, okay, if the if the man, uh, if one of our brothers and sisters, right now we got brothers and sisters in China, in India, in Bangladesh, in Myanmar, in Kenya, in Africa, Somalia, Sudan, we got brothers and sisters all over the world being tortured. You do, do you think they're conscious of it? Conscious of it? Do you think they feel it? Sure they do. But do you think God eases the pain? Sure he does. You think God causes them to pass out? You betcha. See? But when they wake up, they, they, they can feel the, the, the pain in their body. They can feel it. And they offer it up to God. Hallelujah. Oh God, pray you bless our brothers and sisters going through the pain right now, Lord. Bless them, God. Help them. Give them grace, Father. Hallelujah. But you see, eternal punishment. Eternal is the same word. Okay? Eternal life, life eternal, and then everlasting is the same Greek word. Everlasting. Perpetual. See? Perpetual. Also used of past time or past and future as well. Eternal, forever, everlasting world. So you can't say, oh yeah, you, you can say it if you have a lot of money. Make yourself feel good. Make yourself feel safe, okay? Like you're not going to go to eternal punishment being conscious of the torture that you're going to be in, that's going to be inflicted upon you there, okay? You, you can just make it up in your mind so you can feel better in this life. But I guarantee you, many of you that are doing that, you don't have many years left. Maybe 15, 20, 30 years, maybe. Yeah. You'll find out if you don't repent. You'll find out that it's eternal punishment, eternal fire. You'll find out that death and hell are thrown into the lake of fire and the smoke of their torment ascends up forever and ever. You'll find out where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. You'll find out God says repent and believe the truth. And it's not fear driving me to Jesus. It's His love. It's His mercy and His grace that saved me. Hallelujah. It's not fear. It's not fear of going to hell. I deserve hell. And if God threw me in hell, He'd be perfectly just in doing so.
because he would know something I don't know. But I promise you right now, I'm saved by faith, hallelujah, by grace through faith, and I know it, hallelujah. And I'm not going to hell. And God's had mercy on my soul. Mercy on my wife, mercy on many of you. God's had mercy on us all. His mercy is forever to those who fear Him. Hallelujah. I pray that this message has pierced your heart today. I pray it blesses you. I pray that somewhere along the way, the Holy Ghost convicted you of something. Because we all need to have conviction. He's convicted me. Hallelujah. He's convicted me. He says, open thy mouth and I will fill it. Hallelujah. I say, yes, Lord. He says, look to me. I say, yes, Lord. Trust me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, I pray you seal this word into the heart of the believers today, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the lost right now. We lift them up together as one body, Lord. We lift them up to you, Jesus. We say, you see these dead people, Lord. You see these dead people, Lord. They're dead. Spiritually dead. Lost. Need life, Jesus. Meet them today, Lord Jesus. Bring them in. Bring them in, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen.